I, for one, am sick of just regular old gurus talking about fasting like they know everything. Talking about it from a body composition side, and that's it. Well, I want to talk about fasting from the angle of the immune system. How it's going to actually help your T cells. How it's going to help your stem cells. How it's going to help your body recover when it comes down to inflammation in your overall immune system. Because intermittent fasting is much more than just getting in amazing shape. So let's take a look at some science. And to kick this off, I do want to reference an awesome study that USC did. But first and foremost, if you haven't already, please turn on notifications for my videos. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. You definitely won't be sorry that you did. So USC did an interesting study. They took a look at the result on the stem cells when it comes down to fasting individuals. And they took a look at how the stem cells actually regenerated and how white blood cells reacted to the response of fasting. Well, what they found was, of course, fasting ultimately depleted white blood cells, which sounds like a bad thing, but it's actually a good thing because what we do want to have happen is the white blood cells to eventually die off so that the body can create stronger, more efficient ones. And that's exactly what's happening. So these depleted white blood cells ended up leading to stem cells producing more. When the white blood cells went down, it kickstarts the stem cells to have to go into regeneration mode. Whenever your stem cells go into regeneration mode, you're producing new white blood cells and that is allowing the body to be able to recover better. Therefore, those new white blood cells that are being produced by those stem cells regenerating are stronger, healthier, and a lot more resistant. Now, to add insult to injury in a good way, we ended up finding that there was a reduced amount of PKA as well. Now, PKA is a gene restriction thing. So basically what that means is when you're talking about fasting and you're talking about the relationship with the stem cells, if you have lower levels of PKA, it means it allows the stem cells to turn on into regeneration mode. The stem cells are now in the position to start creating new cells. Otherwise, they go kind of dormant. Okay, so now let's get into the fun stuff. So the insulin link, I call this the insulin link because fasting reduces insulin, and I'll explain that in just a second. But again, referencing a study, the Journal of Immunology found that high levels of insulin prevent what are known as T cells from doing their job well, also known as Tregs. Now, then of course, T cells are there to actually suppress inflammation and to fight off certain illnesses. If we have a disease in the body or if we have an infection or anything like that, we have inflammation. And T cells usually come in and fight that inflammation off. T cells are a white blood cell that's actually formed from the marrow that regulate immune function. So we have helper versus killer cells. Let me explain that really quick with a diagram. All right, this is blood supply the blood flowing this way. These purple things indicate crazy bad things that shouldn't be in the body. Okay, let's just say there's some kind of infectious disease or there's some kind of bacteria. So what ends up happening is these helper T cells that they're called, they come through and they identify these foreign bodies and they put a tag on them. And that tag says kill. Okay, that tag, they've now been tagged as a bad foreign object. Then what happens is the killer T cells, which are these big Pac-Man looking things, they come in and they try to identify anything that has a label that the helper cell put on it. In this case, this item right here has a kill label applied, so the killer T cell is coming through to eat it. So they work in tandem, helper T cells and killer T cells. Now, when we have high levels of insulin in the body, like every time we eat or every time we have a lot of sugar, we end up having that insulin that ends up making it so the T cells can't do their job, meaning our immune system is not functioning as well. So fasting and insulin have a strong connection because every time that we fast, our body slowly starts utilizing stored fat as a fuel source because we're not feeding it glucose. Consequently, that lipid droplet shrinks and it becomes much more sensitive to insulin, meaning the cells need less insulin to get the job done. Less overall insulin is needed, consequently less insulin in the bloodstream, therefore more killer and helper cells doing what they need to do, doing their Pac-Man thing. All right, then we get over to ketones and inflammation. When you're fasting, you are producing ketone bodies, plain and simple. Ketosis and fasting are two different things, but the end result within the body metabolically is about the same. Yale University did a study specifically looking at ketones and beta-hydroxybutyrate. They exposed human immune cells to beta-hydroxybutyrate and found there was a huge suppression in inflammation. Now, the way that this beta-hydroxybutyrate had an effect on the immune cells was actually by working against what's called the NLRP3 inflammasome. This NLRP3 inflammasome is a multi-protein oligomer that allows your body to trigger inflammation. So when we reduce that NLRP3, we are getting rid of that catalyst for inflammation or at least reducing it. So therefore, the body doesn't produce as much inflammation and you end up having a happier situation, a better immune system. 
So people don't always realize that fasting and ketosis, actually, even the ketogenic diet, has a big impact on inflammation in the immune system in and of itself. Okay, lastly, let's touch on digestion for just a second. When we look at what is happening in our body when we're digesting food, it's pretty eye-opening. About 65% of our energy is focused in the GI tract when we eat a big meal. So whenever we're eating food and we're eating frequently, we're diverting a lot of the energy to the digestive system. When you're fasting, you're giving your digestive system a chance to recover. The autophagy that's occurring, everything that's occurring is allowing the body to recover and allowing it to heal that digestive tract. That means more gut motility. That means your bowels are moving, you're able to go to the bathroom, you're able to flush things out. Things are moving along in the right direction, which thereby leads to a balanced gut flora. Now, if you've seen a lot of the link between the gut-brain axis and the enteric brain, the enteric nervous system, we now know that digestion plays a huge role in not only our mental health, but also our immune system. About 60% of our immune system is right there in our colon. So if we are getting things moving, simply because we're fasting and allowing those cells to heal and increasing the motility, we're doing ourselves a huge service by improving our immune system that way. So anyway, that's the gist of it. Fasting does a lot more than just get you shredded, does a lot more than just make life easy. It actually helps you boost your immune system and there's some legitimate science to back it up. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. If you have ideas for future videos, Hit them in the comment section below. I'll be sure to check them out. We'll see you soon.